Good evening. Um, bonsoir tout le monde. Um, first, I'm very pleased to be uh, joining you all here in Mexico City at the uh, North American Leaders Summit uh, in what has been a very uh, productive uh, set of meetings among Canada, the United States, and Mexico, where we've discussed a wide range of priorities touching on the economy, on climate change, and of course, public security. Uh, but tonight, I want to give you an important update uh, regarding the Nexus program. And so tonight, I am very pleased uh, to say that Canada and the United States have agreed uh, to significantly enhance the Nexus processing applications capacity by 50%. And this is very good news coming out of the pandemic and looking for ways uh, to further accelerate travel between our two countries. Leveraging this program, we're going to be able to put into place a number of measures that will allow us to achieve those goals. Um, those measures include uh, accelerating uh, the renewals process for those applicants who have already submitted uh, their papers and uh, have put in uh, previously for interviews. Uh, secondly, we are on the American side extending hours at enrollment centers across 12 CBP locations. And then third and finally, what we are doing is putting in place a new streamlined two-step process that will allow Canadian travellers to apply for an interview here on the Canadian side, and then for those who are travelling on to the United States uh, to complete that process uh, at pre-clearance locations. So uh, on this streamlined process, uh, we will roll this out at airports, at eight airports where there is already pre-clearance by this spring, so this is going to come very quickly. And we have already launched the two-step streamlined process at uh, land ports of entry in Fort Erie, uh, as well as uh, the uh, Kingston Thousand Islands Land Port of Entry. And at that particular location, the process is as simple as uh, showing up, um, doing your interview on the Canadian side, and then carrying on uh, to the American side of, uh, of the port of entry to complete the American interview process. So it can be done inside of an hour and very efficiently at non-peak times. Finally, I just want to say, before I take your questions, uh, that we want to express our gratitude uh, to our American officials and counterparts. And in particular, I want to thank the officials at CBP. I also want to thank Secretary Mayorkas, with whom I've got a very strong relationship. And I also want to thank the CBSA, who have really been um, working at, uh, at concrete and tangible solutions uh, to not only, again, reboot this program to pre-COVID processing application capacity, but to significantly uh, expand it by 50%. So this is a win-win for Canada and the United States. It's good for uh, Canadian travellers. It's good for the economy on both sides. And it's certainly another good, uh, I think, piece of news coming out of Knowles. And I'm happy to take your questions. Just a Merci. question about how the American interview. The American interview you're talking about is taking place at U.S. Customs Preclearance. Do you have to be taking a flight to the U.S. to do that interview? That's right. And so what's flexible about that is that um, Canadian travelers will be able to decide when it is they choose to make travel plans going on to the United States. So in very simple terms, what this means, Steve, is you'll show up um, on, on the day that you are uh, flying out and you can get your interview done prior to your flight, then carry on to preclearance, complete the interview process there. But yes, you're quite right, you do have to be carrying on to the United States. Minister, can you explain, now that there's a deal, or at least a, a, a workaround, I guess, in place, can you explain why it is that it got to this stage? What exactly is Canada's problem with the status quo? Why was there such reluctance to expand the availability of, of these spaces from a Canadian perspective? What, what exactly, what's the, the, the... The nub of it. The nexus of it, if you yeah, the, <laughs> I like the double on Um Well, look, in the first place, I, I think the obvious answer to the question as to um, why it took some time to really dig into the issues uh, around operations was because of COVID-19. Um, and the fact that both countries had to put in place significant health measures, which saw um, all personal travel stop, and uh, the need to come up with new innovative uh, ways in which we could keep um, pathways that were vital to our economies going uh, did definitely have an impact not only on nexus but on every uh, on every avenue of immigration and so coming out of pandemic and being in the strong position that we are in right now um, we always knew that nexus was a program that benefited um, canadians and americans and alike and in particular those communities that straddle the border uh, and so that was one of the main reasons why we really uh, had to dig into the issue and make sure that the program coming back uh, was fit for the moment that we find ourselves in. With regards to the second part of your question, 
I think it's uh, great news that we're able to bring this program back with 50% additional processing applications capacity. Why? Because the demand is there, because people see this as a way to uh, accelerate their travel in a flexible, uh, seamless, and efficient way. And that's precisely what the vision of this program is. So this is truly a win-win, and I think, frankly, the additional time that it took to get to this result was worth the wait. Because what this means now is that with an additional 50%, this is not just an incremental uh, bump up. We're talking about a rather significant uh, enhancement of the overall processing of applications, which is good news for both countries. En quoi c'est une bonne nouvelle? Parce qu'avant, corrigez-moi si je me trompe, le processus américain pouvait être fait en sol canadien. Oui. Là, il va falloir aller le faire en, en sol américain. En quoi c'est une bonne nouvelle? Mais euh, parce que, euh, tout d'abord, euh, on avait augmenté euh, le, le niveau de capacité pour le processus des, des applications. Donc, avec cette, euh, cette euh, additionnelle euh, capacité, ça est un répondre à la demande pour un programme qui est là pour l'efficace des de voyageurs sur les deux côtés de la frontière. Donc, c'est une très bonne euh, étape euh, pour le euh, Canada et les États-Unis. Oui, il y a un nouveau processus euh, pour l'étape des de entrevues, euh, mais c'est une étape qui euh, est une euh, réflexion euh, de le nouveau moment que nous euh, trouverons. Et euh, on va continuer de collaborer, moi, mais euh, tout d'abord, c'est une très bonne étape euh, qui, qui augmente la capacité de le programme. Parce qu'il n'y avait pas de flexibilité avec les douaniers américains? Mais c'est le, euh, euh, le choisir de la voyagère de sélectionner leur, leur temps de voyage et avec euh, cette, euh, cette, les choisir sous les vols ou même euh, à des, des portes d'entrée sous le terrain. Il y a beaucoup de flexibilité là. Donc, euh, c'est les voyageurs qui, euh, qui euh, gèrent euh, les, les, les façons euh, qu'ils peuvent euh, compléter le processus. Mais l'augmentation de la capacité est très bonne nouvelle pour un programme parce que c'est une euh, augmentation très signi signi euh, significative. Pardon. Do you see this as a long-term solution or is this, is this just a workaround for now? Because you haven't actually resolved the core dispute at the, at the heart of this, right? Well, sorry, why don't you uh, tell us what the uh, core dispute is in your words? Well, of having interview centers, um, the, uh, the Americans, from what I understand, were demanding extra legal protections for working at these interview centers. And from what I understand in this solution, we don't have those internet, those interview centers in Canada, are, those won't be reopening, in fact. And instead, you're, you're sending people to pre-clearance halls. Well, no, I think it's, look, it's an important question, but let me clarify that we've actually come up with a solution around powers and authorities that does allow those border officials on both sides of the border to perform functions that uh, revolve around the screening and processing of nexus applications, while at the same time uh, respecting Canadian sovereignty, which is a principle that is reciprocated on both sides. And it is important not to gloss, gloss over the fact um, that, 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 that sovereignty is, is something that, that goes right to the core of how we enforce our laws, et cetera. But we have come up with a solution that works for both Canada and the United States around PNAs, and it revolves around the location of um, CBSA officers at pre-clearance zones in the airport. So that's the first thing I would say. But with regards to the overall vision of the program, um, this is a significant step. Um, it's a significant step pre precisely because it augments the capacity to respond to the increased demand, which actually expedites travel. This is good not only for the economy, it's good, as I mentioned earlier, for people who live in border communities and having the people-to-people -people ties there and being able to use this program to get back and forth uh, with, with less time and more efficiency is precisely those two prongs that were at the, the core vision of this, of this program. So I think both on the very isolated issue that you'd asked about, I think we've come up with a solution that will work uh, for both uh, border uh, officials and agencies, but in the long run also augments the, 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 the capacity of the program responding to the demand, which uh, speaks to the vision of the program. But, but Minister, is this in fact less convenient for people who want to apply for Nexus instead of going to an interview center that exists entirely in one country and not have to make plans? I, I don't think so. Across the border, you have to like book and pay for a flight to cross, you know, to go across the border well, to do the interview rather than like doing something but, entirely contained within Canadian. Well, so territory. let's go back to what the original vision of the program was, which is Canada, U.S travel. So binational uh, travel was at the very heart and core of the Nexus program. So what does that mean in practical terms? It means that you are in your own travel plans 
by definition, planning to go on to the United States. And what is good about this option is that it does allow the traveler to make the choices around when they will be going to carry on and complete the American side of the interview. So it's a streamlined process. Uh, and, and certainly for those who use Nexus for domestic travel, because there are some that do, uh, we're uh, continuing to look at innovative options so that they can continue to do that too. Right, but it seems less convenient to me to have to leave the country to do the interview process than go to a processing center to do the interview. That well, not, not, not if it plays out in the way that I described it earlier to uh, one of your colleagues' questions, which is if you make uh, a plan to, to fly to the United States, and you uh, show up on the day of uh, to, to complete your Canadian interview, you literally carry on to pre-clearance where you will complete uh, that side of, of, of the American side of the interviewing process, and it should not take very long. So I think on the whole, um, you know, you're right, this is a streamlined process, it's a new process, but it also uh, allows us to expand the capacity of processing applications, which means that people are more people are going to be able to get their cards more quickly. We're going to be able to reduce that backlog, which is also, I think, uh, an important uh, development I get, I get coming out of this. Last question: Can you clarify what that backlog is? What numbers are we at right now? Um, so we are looking at a, at a backlog, and again, I want to uh, caveat this: these these are estimates uh, at somewhere between, uh, I would say, 220 to 240,000, and we hope to reduce uh, and dramatically eradicate uh, that that backlog as a result of the suite of measures that uh, that we've introduced today. And again, uh, this is the product of a lot of hard work between officials um, by enhancing the capacity by 50 percent. Um, we are going to be able to take a bite out of that backlog in a significant way while at the same time uh, process uh, new applications that are coming through and that's going to be good uh, for travel on both sides of the country. Can I ask a question about Haiti? I know that RCMP officers... RCMP I, got, I got you both coming. RCMP officers have uh, actually participated in uh, Haiti uh, peacekeeping missions as well as uh, security operations in the past. Were you ever consulted, did you ever consult RCMP officers who went to Haiti before as to whether or not Canada should be involved in some type of uh, 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 intervention right now? Well, first, the, the, the situation in Haiti is obviously very tragic uh, and it is the product of uh, much instability over many, many years, in fact, uh, decades. And our heart goes out to the people of Haiti who, you know, like everybody else, uh, want to be able to go about their daily lives in a way that is safe and secure. Um, naturally, uh, Canada, over the course of the, uh, some of those years, not all of them, but I would say over the course of uh, a number of, of years, uh, has contributed to try to enhance in a positive way the stability and the security on the ground. And previously, uh, there were uh, deployments of RCMP officers there, and um, for a number of reasons, uh, that, that deployment uh, sunset. Um, I would say to you that, um, that there are discussions that are going on between uh, Canada and the United States and others in ways in which uh, we can help uh, the Haitians uh, enhance their own capacity to create a stability on the ground. It's a complex problem. It's one that has proved very elusive uh, for successive administrations. But naturally, as we are uh, looking at ways to, to contribute, we're, we're not only consulting with uh, the RCMP, we're consulting with the entire community within public safety, within intelligence, within global affairs, so that as Canada tries to assist Haiti, um, as we have done very recently uh, through, uh, again, aid that has been there to help uh, the, the, the Haitian National Police uh, build up their capacity, uh, we're taking a whole of government approach and of course uh, we'll continue to keep you updated on that. Thank you very much.